Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the flexure stresses. The flexure stresses also known as the bending stresses. Bending stresses. So we can say that that these are the stresses occurring from the bending of any structure member, and these stresses are mostly common occurring the beams and the slab and also in the retaining wall. We mostly design our these three members for the flexure stresses. Retaining wall. So why these stresses occur in this member? Because if I consider the simple example of this beam, let's consider this the simple example of simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load acting on this beam is W. So upon loading this beam will start deflection and it will be resisted at the two supports so there is no deflection at the supports so due to this deflection due to this bending the stresses will occur in this beam which is known as the flexure stresses or bending stresses so all these three types of the structure member are are mostly a dominant in the flexure they are not they don't have any axial stresses like if i consider the column the column is mostly uh, is mostly dominant in the axial so when the load acts on the common column, so the load acts through the axis of the column, so they mainly have axial stresses in the column. While the beam, slab and retaining wall, they are mostly designed for the flexure stresses. So that's why the design process for these three types of structure member will be called as the flexure design. So due to this deflection, we have the flexure stresses or the bending stresses in the beam throughout the length of the beam. At this portion, you can see that there will be less flexure stresses and here increasing increasing and the maximum flexure stresses will be occur at the mid of the beam and here also increasing increasing and the maximum flexure stresses at the mid of the beam so if i consider the cross section of the beam let's consider this is the cross section of this beam where this is the depth of the beam is h and this is the width of the beam is b so if i draw the cross section The stress diagram for this beam so there will be two types of the stresses uh, the flexure stresses are classified you, you can say into two types one is the compressor stresses compressor stresses and one is the tension stresses so the beam will exert will be subjected to the compressor stresses at the top compressor stresses this beam will be compressed at the top and will be tension at the bottom tension stresses at the bottom so that's why the flexure stresses has two main categories of compressor stresses and the tensile stresses or tension stresses. While at the neutral axis we have zero stresses and this is called as the neutral axis. And we can find out the flexure stresses by this formula. The flexure stresses are the bending stresses is equal to the m y divided by i. Where m is the moment demand at which point you are interested to find the moment. Flexure stresses so you will put the moment value like let's suppose I'm interested to find the flexure stresses at this portion, right? So I will find out the moment value at this point. The y. The y is the distance from the neutral axis up to which uh, in which you are interested to find the uh, flexure stresses throughout the depth of your beam. So let's suppose this is your y from the neutral axis. Uh, if you are interested to find the stresses at the top of the beam, which is the maximum stresses, so it will be called as the C. So this formula can be updated is like this way m c or i where c is now called as the, the maximum distance from the neutral axis to the point of interest while the i is the moment of inertia for this beam if, if you can see here there is a rectangular beam so the moment of inertia for a rectangular beam will be b h q over 12 so by putting all this value into this equation you can find the flexure stresses of your beam which will be maximum at the top and the bottom compressor and tension so this was all about the flexure stresses that are mostly common occurring in the beam, slab and retaining wall and they should must be de designed for the flexure stresses and we provide the reinforcement at the bottom of the beam for the tension so the concrete is weak in tension while the compressor stresses we don't put in a reinforcement but the concrete is strong in compression so concrete is okay for the compression stresses. So this was all about the flexure stresses. Hope you guys understand that how we find the uh, flexure stresses uh, and what is the flexure stresses? 